Hi everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today we're going to talk about chromatography columns. Specifically, how to create a column that has three critical properties. Uniform length from top to bottom. Uniform width or diameter across that column. And a uniform density of silica gel throughout the column. If we can create a column that has these three critical properties, we stand a much better chance of having a successful separation. And today I'm going to show you how to do that using a technique known as wet packing a column. So let's get started. In order to create our column, we're going to need a few things. The first of these is glass wool, a very fine fibrous form of glass that's going to prevent solids from moving through our column. We're also going to need some chromatography sand, which is just nice pure sand that's going to provide a level base on which to build our silica gel column. And as I just mentioned, we're going to need silica as well so that we can actually create the area where the separation will take place. I'm going to be using dichloromethane as my mobile phase. And in addition to those materials, I'm going to need a glass funnel, naturally a chromatography column with a stopcock, one of these very sophisticated tools here, a bent coat hanger. I'm also going to need my lab jack, a beaker for receiving the solvent as it flows through the column, and some means of immobilizing my column. I'm going to use a three-fingered clamp for that. first order of business is to be sure that solids don't flow through our column like the liquids will. So we're going to use a small tuft of glass wool. Not much at all, just enough to block the entrance to the stopcock. I'm going to ball that glass wool up and push it into the column from the top. It won't go very far of course because it will spring up to life and sort of get stuck inside. So I'm going to use that very sophisticated column packing tool, my bent coat hanger, to push that glass wool plug down to the base of the column near the entry to the stopcock. Then the maddening exercise of trying to get it to stay put there begins. But after a little bit of practice, you should be able to get that tuft of glass wool to essentially stay put, at least to the point where no sand or silica will flow through the stopcock when placed on top of that glass wool. For the rest of our column packing exercise here, it's better to have the column clamped straight up and down. So I'm going to return it to the three-fingered clamp that was holding it originally. At this point, I'm ready to add a little bit of chromatography sand. Now this sand is going to serve several purposes. It's going to give us a nice level surface, and that surface is going to be above the glass wool, so we don't have any little tendrils of glass wool sticking up, and also above the taper in the column that leads to the stopcock. So if I watch carefully as I add just a little bit of this sand, I can be sure that I've added enough. At the moment I'm past the taper, but I see a little bit of glass wool still poking through, so I add just a smidge more. And at this point, I'm satisfied that the sand is going to be adequate to provide me that nice level base without any glass wool sticking up through the bottom of it. This will be the base for my column. Here we can see that the glass wool is doing its job. The stopcock is open, but the sand is not flowing through the bottom of the column. But now we're about to add some liquids, so we need to be sure that we turn the stopcock to the closed position. Remember, when it's horizontal with the little hole facing side to side, that's when the stopcock is closed, so liquids won't flow through. Next it's time to add a little bit of mobile phase to the column so that we'll have something there to protect our base from the splashing stationary phase when it's added. So I'm going to place my glass stem funnel in the top and pour just a little bit of mobile phase into the column, being sure that the stopcock is closed, of course. As you can see here, I've added about one-third of a column volume worth of mobile phase, and I haven't been too concerned about how gently I've added at this point, because if I disturb my sand layer, I can simply level it right back out. At this point, People often find it helpful to give the column a little tap with an open hand. This serves two purposes. The first is it will re-level the sand that we may have disturbed when adding that first bit of our mobile phase. It also will encourage any bubbles that may break loose from that sand bed and move upward into the column that will eventually be on top of it to just go ahead and come loose. 
If this amount of agitation is not adequate to release a bubble, that's fine, it can stay put. But we just want the loose ones to come out and go ahead and flow to the top of the column. With that done, we're ready to add our stationary face. The silica stationary face itself is opaque and white. But we're going to add some mobile phase to it to create a slurry. This is the wet pack technique. I add just enough mobile phase that I can begin to swirl that stationary phase to suspend it within the liquid. Having done that, I'm going to hold it to the column, swirl and immediately pour to be sure that I get some silica in there along with the dichloromethane. Now our reason for adding that bit of mobile phase earlier is apparent. When I pour the slurry in, it provides a cushion that prevents the silica slurry from disturbing the sand bed at the base of my column that I worked so hard to build. Once added, the slurry will begin to separate, and the silica that's going to make up the stationary phase of my column will very slowly settle as it's slightly more dense than the solvent itself. After all of the settling is complete, and the interface between the silica gel and the pure solvent above it is no longer moving, we can decide whether our column is large enough. If not, we simply swirl and add additional stationary phase slurry, being careful not to completely overfill the column and create a spill and a mess. Once again, we'll allow the silica gel to slowly settle to the base of the column, creating a column of uniform density. Once I'm happy with the height of my column, which it looks like I will be this time, that looks pretty good to me, we've got our column packed. There are those who suggest adding a small layer of sand to the top of the column can also help to protect it during loading, which is a technique that I personally choose not to use. So, from my perspective, I'm done. So we've added glass wool to our column to prevent solids from flowing through. We've added a layer of sand to provide a level surface on which to build our column ensuring uniform length. We've made sure that that sand was above the taper in the column to ensure uniform diameter and we've tapped all the bubbles loose that we could, helping to promote a better uniform density in our column. After that, we use the wet pack technique to add our slurry and let our stationary phase settle very gently, again ensuring that we get a column of uniform length, diameter, and density. It's time to load our column and run our experiment, and we'll do that in our next video. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. I'll see you for that video next time.